Hi guys, it's Kat here from Jolly Jam Journals. I've been busy this morning. I've been um, crafting away and, um, well, I was crafting away last night as well. Um, carrying on this morning, I've been coffee dyeing some papers, um, envelopes, index cards, all sorts of things. And I've also been wanting to uh, alter some of my tins. And um, first of all, thank you for all your positive uh, encouragement and comments to my videos. Um, the Nick the Booksmith um, challenge and also my op shop haul. Um, I'm just blown away at how active YouTube actually is. So um, thank you very much for your interest. Um, special thanks and hello to Wendy Mason and Bonnie from Bonnie and Clive. Um, I'm fairly certain they are members of the um, Junk Journals Down Under Facebook group as well. Um, and they commented on my op shop haul video a few days ago. Um, so special hello guys. And um, Bonnie asked to see some of my altered tins. So I thought I'd showcase them and, and then just do a little quick tutorial, or well, not even a tutorial, I guess, just to show you how I do them because lots of people do them and there's heaps and heaps of videos on YouTube. So all you have to do is just search altered tins and I'm sure lots and lots of tutorials will come up. But um, this is some examples of, of what I have done. Um, this is my, my first one uh, when I watched a tutorial myself and I got super excited about it. So it's just a little old tin pencil case. I picked it up in an op shop, about 50 cents. Uh, you can pick these up from anywhere from 50 cents. Oops, I've got a bit of a gesso on there. Um, anything from 50 cents to a dollar. And um, <clears throat> I think this had some markings on the back. So I just got some, um, rose gold um, acrylic paint, painted the back of it, and then I've altered the top of it. This is a glossy um, finish on it, so I thought I would try matte, and I must say, oops, upside down, I must say that I do, and, and that's the thing too, when I first did it, um, when I actually realized, when I finished doing it, that I'd actually done it upside down. But I still love it. Um, but I tend to put my art type stuff in there. So I've got my drawing pencils and I've got <clears throat> yeah, some other things from an art class that I went to a while ago. Um, then I progressed and I did another one. Um, so this one was, it was a little bit happier with this one. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So I, I put some buttons in this tin. And I did, um, I did both both sides as well. I'm I'm in the finance area, so uh, that's why I was attracted to ledgers and multiplication tables. Then I wanted to step it up a little bit, so I found another nice tin. Um, this was like an old chocolate tin, I think, or probably a biscuit. I think it might have had chocolates in it, and I started to decoupage with some napkins and rice paper. And I was trying to put an owl in the middle and it kind of messed it all up. So um, I didn't know what to do with it. And then um, I thought, oh, I can put some buttons over that to cover it. So now, it, and it was my button tin anyway. So yeah, I've just got the hot glue gun out and put some buttons, sorted buttons on there. But yep, they're all my bigger um, various types of buttons as well, because I, I do love buttons. So that's that one. Um, now this is one that I just did fairly recently. This one here I, I covered with some rice paper and then a little bit of Tim Holtz um, paper. And as I've mentioned before, I'm from Perth, Western Australia. Um, so hello guys out there, fellow Aussies. Um, and I'm delighted to have found out that um, Tim Holtz is now being sold through Spotlight stores. So I went out there as soon as I heard that news and I bought a few things from there and I managed to get some paper, which I've been trying to source. Um, but I actually did order this online. Um, oh no, I think I might've got this from, from a scrapbook store here in Perth. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then my stepdaughter Isla has been wanting to get in on the action as well. So I bought her this tin and it was a, I think it was 50 cents and it was a pink um, Barbie tin. And when I gave it to her, she said, why would I want a pink Barbie tin? And then I explained to her, well, you can, I will teach you how to alter the tins. So this is Isla's first attempt, and I think she's done pretty well. Um, so she's done that, and then she's done this multiplication because she's 
learning her multiplication tables. I think she's a lot better now since she's done this. And then the inside, um, because it was all pink, we were trying to work out how to cover it and I did tell her to gesso it and she didn't. Um, she just um, Mod Podge straight on and decoupaged it. I was going to fix it, but when I looked at it, I actually liked it. I really like that messy, grungy look and I thought that was pretty cool, so I've left it. So this is Isla's um, version of, of a tin. Okay, so let's dive into it. Your supplies you're gonna need are a tin. So, um, you know, start off, start off small. Um, you can use a mint tin um, or you could, yeah, any tin. I'd probably go for, for a shaped tin like this, like a rectangular tin or a square tin. You're going to need some sealer. So I just use the matte finish um, Mod Podge with a sponge applicator. You can get these at any craft store or you can even get them at Spotlight or Red Dot stores. Some rubber stamps and a pad. So I've got these Cavallini Par Avian Par Avion stamps, which I really like. And then I've got some um, Memento Tuxedo Black um, ink. You'll need some washi tape. I've selected out one already. Um, again, um, Tim Holtz sell washi tape through Spotlight and I did buy a whole pack of, like a whole tube of those, but there's lots of, you can get washi tape in Officeworks. You can get them online at Etsy. But yeah, there's lots of places you can get washi tape. And then you'll need some scrap paper. So I, I'm going to use this Tim Holtz paper because I've been dying to, Give it a go. So this is the eight by eight inch and it's the etc. Um, Tim Holtz paper pad. And I've got a little um, vintage, and these are like from family um, envelopes. Um, I've mentioned that I've been lucky enough to get some of my family um, vintage stuff. And this is, I, I've taken all this um, stamps off because I knew I would use it for this purpose. <clears throat> altering tins and I also do other things as well like I alter index cards. Uh, optional is a, um, a corner rounder. So let's get into it. First of all you need to get your tin and you need to sort out your background paper. So as I said I've kind of played around a little bit and I just eyeball it and I'm just going to roughly cut a shape to fit the top of this tin and there's lines on it so um, I have already kind of pre-marked the lines so that's made it a lot easier so you can certainly trace it measure it do whatever you want but this is what I do I just eyeball stuff because I'm usually just quick want to get things done <clears throat> so that fits that will fit there on the top now this is where you'll want to get your corner rounder and just trim your corners like that. So, so that will now sit there like that. So what I do is I adhere that to the top of the tin. So I just get some um, Mod Podge. I think other people use gels, different mediums. I've got some of that, but I haven't actually used it as yet. <clears throat> I just kind of quite happy with the, um, the Mod Podge, so I just keep going with that. Okay, so then I pop that on top like that. Okay. So let that dry. And that'll probably take about 30 minutes. So we'll come back. Um, well, you won't, but I will come back when that's dry. Okay, so I'm back again and uh, it's all dried and I've been playing around a little bit with, uh, before I do that, um, I've been playing around a little bit with this bit of stamp that I wanted to add. So what I did was I very, very, very carefully just went around with my fingernail and I, um, just ripped it down and tore it down a little bit more trying not to lose what I wanted to keep but it fits now quite nicely within that space there 
and I just thought I might pop that just there so what I do is I pop some Mod Podge down there and just carefully put that where I want it so that just fits nicely there like that and, and get some more Mod Podge and I just go over the lot there like that. And so now we'll just do these edges so I just get my Mod Podge and I just bring that around sides like that. Here I've worked out how to speed up their camera slightly so you didn't have to sit through and watch me do the whole thing and I'm continuing to just do the edges. Okay so that's done. So then I'm just going to get my washi tape and I'll just and want to get that around like that, like so I will. All right, once we get the general length, we can fiddle around and fit it. There we go. So, I'm just going to tear that off. I might just get my scissors and just snip that. Whoops, this is just a little bit. Let's see if we can stretch that. There we go. Stretch that to fit across there. Okay, so I'm just going to play around with that and just make sure I've got that how I want use my fingernail just to sort of line it in place yep so pretty happy with all of that that's going to be a bit tricky because that was I snipped it just a little bit too too tightly there but it's all right it'll be all good so just to do these corners I just get my exacto knife and I just do a couple of little slits there in the corner just so it folds down and this is going to be a bit trickier this one I might have to try and do this left-handed while I hold it just poke it and I'll just bring it up then what I do is I just very carefully, just with my nail, let's see, is that, oops, not, yep, that's cut, just with my nail, I just pull those corner bits in there, like that. Is a little bit fiddly this part but all I'm doing is um, folding the corners down with my thumb and then I'm smoothing the washi tape down have it uh, so what I did was I, I just went around while the Mod Podge is still wet and I've just like pushed it all back into shape um, just making sure that the washi lines up with the bottom it doesn't have to be perfect it is a homemade item so it does not have to be perfect but yeah, I've just gone around and just done the best I can. I've checked um, just the top. I've just had a look at it. I've folded it over. I've smoothed it over. I've just gone in and just pressed it in with my thumb like that. Now, there's a little ridge here. So I've just gone around with my thumbnail and I've just carefully indented that in. And there we have it. So what I'll do now is I'll give it a final layer of Mod Podge and then I'll let it dry and I will be back with an optional extra if you want. Okay, so I have now um, dried the tin and it's um, ready to add some finishing touches. It, it looks really cool like this as it is, but I think we could still do more um, because you know what we're like especially with the uh, multimedia and the the, the junk junking we we just keep going so I've got my par Avion stamps here and I think it would be nice just to add a little bit of um, 
I don't know, I like this cancelled thing, cancelled stamp here. So I'm just going to just run that across a few times. And I reckon, uh, what do you reckon? I reckon uh, maybe there. Hold it down for five seconds. Yeah, I reckon that looks really cool. And maybe we could also do uh, this Paris, or shall we do this aeroplane one? It's quite heavy. Um, hopefully we'll get that, that all in. So I just run it over my um, stamp pad and I just carefully remove any of these little bits there because I don't want them to smear on. Okay, let's go for it. Where should we put it? I reckon over here. Let's try. Wish me luck, guys. Oh, I think it moved a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, you can just sort of see it, but it looks all right. Well, there we have it, um, the finished pro project, and I'm really happy with the way that the tin worked out. Uh, what will I use it for? Um, well, I have been using it for um, collecting my scraps that are too big to throw away. So that, yeah, I just keep them in there and then um, I just fish through them every now and then and I find another use for them. Uh, these are just some index cards that I've um, also been playing around with um, just old letters and bits of paper from you know family records and history etc that I've just been um, playing around with and um, altering these index cards these are just little mini ones this is a little bit of a glassine envelope um, update I showed on my op shop haul video that I had bought these little tiny glassine bags they're so tiny that they just fit in your hand and I wasn't sure what I would use them for um, but yeah I've been playing around and um, I've, I've been altering those as well so if you're interested in seeing my process for that um, just let me know but thank you very much for watching um, let me know if if you like this and if the video length was okay um, I have been doing a bit of editing so I hope it's it's not too much editing I love to read your comments let me know if there's anything you'd like to see but I'm gonna call it a day guys I've got heaps to get on with um, have a great day until I see you next time okay bye